Previously on Gears. We used to protect Cox settlements. Now we're about to raid one. <laughs> Raiding is what outsiders do. Lieutenant, you've been busy. Look, our village hasn't had power in weeks. We need this fabricator. I don't care about the goddamn fabricator. You're taking my people. What happened? The short version? The cop is on his way. You promised me you could steal that fabricator without provoking Jin. This has nothing to do with the fabricator. Then what did you do? Jin accused us of taking her people. Yeah, whatever that means. After Gears of War Judgment, the series was handed over to the Coalition, who were primarily responsible for Gears of War 4. I like Gears 4, but I can't say it does anything super interesting. In fact, the formula has basically remained the same since the very beginning. The sequels introduced some minor changes and refinements, but I can't say any of them have come close to being innovative, at least in terms of the single-player experiences. However, the Coalition would strive for change with the next game in the series, Gears 5. Developed by the Coalition and published by Xbox Game Studios, Gears 5 was released for PC and Xbox One in September 2019. For this review, I played the PC version. Gears 5 is the first entry in the series to drop the Of War part of the title. From what I read, this is because Gears 5 sounds cleaner a lot of players refer to these games as just Gears, Gears 2, Gears 3, or whatever the game is, including myself, so I guess the title change makes sense, but personally, I think Gears of War sounds cooler. Anyway, this review will contain some spoilers, so if you're sensitive to spoilers, now is the time to stop watching, you have been warned. Now let's take a look at Gears 5 and see what's different and how it turned out. After the events of Gears of War 4, JD and Dell were reinstated as COG soldiers, and along with Kate, they make up the new Delta Squad. The plot primarily centers on Kate and her connection to the Locust, and it touches on subjects like trust, loyalty, and friendship. New and returning characters are well developed, and I particularly enjoyed the chemistry between Kate and Dell. An additional campaign called Hive Busters was added in as DLC, and acts as a prequel to the Hive Busters comic book series. The plot centers on Scorpio Squad and their mission to destroy a swarm hive. I like the campaign, but I can't say the story is as compelling as that of Gears 5. This here's Hannah Cole. She's my number one on this covert operation. She knows a lot about science things and uh, is, uh, well, in, in general, quite pleasant to be around. Advanced degrees in biochemistry, toxicology, chemistry, and science things. Thanks, Hoff. Anyway, good to finally meet you. I was pleasantly surprised with Gears 5. The developers actually took some risks and introduced some new ideas. If anything, it's the Hive Busters campaign that feels more like your typical Gears of War experience. I can't say the core gameplay has changed all that much, but there's enough new stuff here to make Gears 5 feel like a breath of fresh air for the franchise. One piece of kit! The campaigns can be played solo or cooperatively on multiple difficulty modes and the Iron Man mode from Gears 4 returns. Furthermore, you can play through the campaigns again in the New Game Plus mode and activate modifiers to mix things up. What's really cool is that you can also bring your online character and skins to the campaign. Plus, you can experience the campaign with David Bautista as Marcus Phoenix, because why not? In addition to the campaigns is competitive multiplayer modes, the Horde mode, and the new Escape mode. The objective in Escape is for a team to infiltrate a swarm hive and plant a bomb, then escape. You can even create your own escape maps, which is cool. As of this review, the multiplayer is still active, and I was able to join several matches. And I cannot say I experienced any technical issues. The Horde and Escape modes support class-based gameplay, and each class comes with different abilities and perks. Classes can be leveled up, and you can unlock skill cards with different bonuses to apply to the classes. As you play the multiplayer modes and complete certain tasks and increase your overall level, you'll earn in-game currency to unlock various customization options like character and weapon skins, and banners and expressions among other stuff. There's a lot to unlock and customize, and the game does support microtransactions.
Based on my experience with Gears 4, the jump to 5 is pretty significant. The refinements and changes to the multiplayer are all great, but I was more impressed with the changes and additions to the campaign gameplay. It comes with all the bells and whistles of a typical Gears of War game, and then some. You're given several opportunities to perform stealth kills, there's a bigger focus on exploration, and you can even upgrade the jackpot that accompanies you. The Hive Busters campaign, on the other hand, while good, isn't as impressive because it feels like more of the traditional linear Gears experience. The standout element here is that each character has unique abilities that can be upgraded. Gears 5 showcases two ideas that overall work pretty well, and are enough to make the experience feel somewhat fresh. The first is the Jackbot upgrade system. Jack is a flying bot that accompanies you on your journey, and you can command him to do basic things like unlock doors, revive allies, and fetch pickups. As you explore the environments, you'll come across components that can be collected, and you can use these to upgrade Jack's various abilities. You can assign one assault and support ability, and switch them out with others on the fly. Jack also has several passive abilities that can be upgraded. Upgrading Jack can become addictive, and he can prove to be extremely helpful on the battlefield. This made me want to explore every nook and cranny for any components in addition to the typical collectibles and pickups you'll find. Jack's abilities can really change how you approach situations compared to the previous games. You can utilize the cloaking ability to sneak up on foes, deploy a shock trap, stun enemies with the flash ability, and my favorite, hijack enemies so they fight for you for a brief time. <laughs> Now, the second new idea introduced is the bigger focus on exploration. There's two points in the main campaign where you're given access to a vehicle called a skiff, and you can pilot it around massive open areas. You can go for the story objectives or secondary objectives, and that's the cool part. You have the option to discover various locations and complete secondary objectives in almost any order you want. What did Paddock say they're doing here? They're trying to get their water supply back online. I think we just discovered the problem! Swarm! So let's get in there and clean them out! Jack, take them! Unfortunately, the open areas are more empty space than interesting. The locations you can visit are pretty obvious on the map you're given, and there's not many. You get to a location, get out of the skiff, and proceed on foot into the location to complete whatever the objective is. That's all fine and good, but the actual open areas themselves are uninteresting for the most part. The skiff is not weaponized, there's no enemies or enemy vehicles roaming around, and there's nothing to see or do outside of visit the locations and complete the objectives. These areas feel like they're open just for the sake of being open. Now, I like the concept of the secondary objectives, and the rewards for completing them are definitely worth it, but the actual open-ended areas feel like a waste and simply pad out the experience. Luckily, the areas are not so massive that getting around feels like a chore, at least I don't think so. But the lack of dynamic events feels like a missed opportunity. Plus, it's not like there's a ton of locations to discover anyway. In some ways, it feels more like the developers were testing the waters just to see how it turns out. I don't think a more open-ended experience is a bad direction to go in, but the open areas in Gear 5 are simply lacking. The secondary objectives are great, but I think the concept would have worked better if you accepted them from a hub area of sorts that would take you directly where you need to go. The Hive Busters campaign is more of a linear experience, and what makes it really stand out is the character abilities. You can play as any of the main characters, utilize their ability, and order the others to use theirs when necessary. Each ability has multiple upgrades, which are found in the environments. Unlike the Jackbot abilities, you do not have the option to choose what ability to upgrade and when. The upgrades you find will be for specific characters, and if you don't take the time to look around, you can miss them. That or they wandered off. Condor's payload! Clear him out! 
And we got a Bastion too! Gears 5 does introduce some new weapons and enemies, and once again, the gunplay is excellent. You can use the Lancer GL assault rifle to fire laser-guided grenades, freeze foes with the cryo cannon, and stun them with flashbang grenades. Gears 5 is another entry that lets you rip enemies to shreds and cover the environments in blood and body parts. The swarm make up the primary enemy faction you'll face, but you will engage some DBs here and there. One new swarm type is a leech, and on its own, it's not much of a threat, but you'll often encounter them in flocks that fly around. Leeches can also possess as DBs, turning the friendly ones against you. Outside of the two big open areas in the Gears 5 campaign, the rest of the environments are more linear and then open up a bit for encounters in typical Gears of War fashion. However, there does seem to be a lot more branching paths and areas off to the sides for exploration compared to the previous games. One thing I did notice is the lack of set pieces, and I assume it's because of the bigger focus on exploration. But that's not to say there isn't any at all. You'll get to mow down foes in weaponized silverbacks, move through wind flares, defend a city from attacking swarm, and ride a giant door down a river of lava. Bastards have nothing better to do! The island is on fire, you fucking idiot! Now, there is, of course, plenty of objects and structures to use as cover during firefights, and I found both the friendly and enemy AI to be competent. Friendlies will revive you and each other, take cover, and shoot to kill. And I was able to utilize the friendly AI to flank and get the jump on foes in certain situations. The only problem I encountered with the AI was during the final boss battle. Without spoiling anything, I lost the fight a couple of times simply because friendlies died for reasons that seemed out of my control. Gears 5 is a great looking game and features good texture work, lighting, and character models. I think the cutscenes in particular look excellent, and the presentation in general is rather colorful. There's a lot of detail pumped into the environments, from the decimated city with rubble and destroyed buildings to the more lush jungle areas of the Hivebusters campaign. This campaign also features several gorgeous backdrops. Gears 5 is another entry with a solid soundtrack and audio work, from the dramatic and intense soundtrack accompanying the action to the sounds of shouting, gunfire, explosions, growling, and snarling. It all sounds great. Great. I'm also happy to report that the game performed very well. The only bug I experienced was an NPC not moving where he was supposed to, halting progress, forcing me to reload the last checkpoint. Come on, back on this uh, platforming thing. As you may or may not know, I'm a big fan of the Gears of War 2 campaign, and despite the improvements and changes made in the sequels, the campaigns just failed to captivate me like Gears 2 did until now. Gears 5 is my second favorite campaign in the series. I still prefer the atmosphere and tone of Gears 2. But objectively speaking, I think Gears 5 does feature the best gameplay in the series so far. It's also the game that finally feels like it breaks free from the shackles of the typical Gears of War experience. Or at least it tries to. It's obvious the developers were trying to do something new, and for the most part it works. The jackpot upgrades and bigger focus on exploration are great, but the open-ended areas are lacking. It's not a bad direction to go in, it just needs more substance. Stay down. I would absolutely recommend Gears 5. It gives you two great campaigns and breathes some new life into the franchise. Some of the new ideas introduced don't reach their full potential, but overall Gears 5 makes for a refreshing experience without compromising what makes a Gears of War game a Gears of War game. Gears 5 is definitely a step in the right direction, and hopefully future games expand on what was established here and continue to move forward with new ideas to keep things fresh and interesting. Definitely check it out. And we're going out there. Yeah, okay, I get it. You can help us end this. Lady, what the fuck do you think I've been doing? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our channel, follow us at the links below, and you can also support us on Patreon. If you're interested in more gaming content, check out our friends over at GameCast.